I'd like to help you draw a tiger. We went to India to Madhya Pradesh, that's the province, to a beautiful state park. It's called Bandhavgar State Park. It's huge, about the size of Rhode Island. And we were there for, I think, three or four days watching birds mostly and some of the other mammals. But it was, um, took a while to see the tiger. And when we saw it, we were bowled over with amazement at what a magnificent creature this is. It's not only magnificent, it's very difficult to draw. So consider this my, uh, an attempt to try to capture some of the beauty of this animal. Um, as I usually do, I'm going to start with a few simple shapes. So if you can copy those down with your pencil. I'm using marker so that the camera will pick up on it. But I will start with a rectangle rectangle with my marker. Now if you have a pencil, then you can erase these, these guidelines that you start out with. So there's the rectangle. And then about ha this line is about halfway from the ground. So I'm making these little marks to indicate where the ground is. Because his um, legs, they're kind of short for an animal so powerful and huge that you would think. So I've, um, it's about halfway between their bottom of their stomach and the ground, and then that's where their paws would be. So sticking um, out from almost the same uh, direction as, the ba as this line that indicates the back will be the tiger's neck, which is very thick and powerful. And then around circle, the tiger's head is very large for its body, especially for a cat. Now I'm going to have him facing the camera or out, out, because the markings on his face, each one is different. It's like a person's fingerprint. So that if you go to a park like um, we went to, there were 30 tigers there. They're endangered. But they could tell exactly who was who because of the markings on the face. So we'll get into that when I start coloring them in. So there's the face. And then I'm just going to cut the little corner off this uh, rectangle and then come down straight, and then his paws kind of stick out quite a bit. They're very big. And then coming up here, there's a little line that goes back, and then instead of going straight up, go a little bit back because there's all those thick muscles there. Because this animal's a very fast runner. This will be the second leg, and I'll go not down quite as far because it will show that it's further away from us. It will use its powerful legs because it will, when it sees its prey, it stalks it or hides, and then it will just leap and jump on its neck and use these powerful legs to get up there. And sometimes it can take down an animal that's larger than itself, like an animal that might be like that might be a water buffalo. And then I'm just going to poof out this part of the rectangle to show the big muscles in the top of his leg. And then his back, his, um, this is such an agile animal, and its spine is very flexible. And so you'll see the shoulder comes up a little bit, and then it comes down almost like a sway back, and then back up to join this. And I'll make this a little bit darker. So if I had my pencil, I could erase those lines right there. And then coming right from that line will be his tail. So his tail doesn't come out here. It's an extension of his spine. And he'll use that tail to balance himself. And also, it's an indicator, just like a house cat, of how it's thinking. So if you see the tiger walking with its tail straight up in the air and waving gently back and forth, he's like curious and friendly and maybe meeting another tiger, although they are mostly sedentary, uh, solitary. But if the tail is swishing back and forth, he's like agitated and excited. But then if it's down at the, um, towards the ground and just the tail is twitching, that means watch out because he's got his eye on some prey. Now it seems like I should add this other leg. I'll have it extended forward a little bit as if he's walking. So when we'd go to the state park, we would be in an open vehicle like a Jeep. And there would be my husband, Joe, me, um, our friend, Martin, Benardi, who's from uh, South Africa, he was our bird guide. He travels with us a lot. And then there would be a guide that was from the state park. You're not allowed to go into the park um, without a guard. And it's only open at certain hours. So the tigers generally are up and about early in the morning and just as the sun sets, that's when they're hunting. And people aren't allowed in the park then. 
So we were there, you know, from around 11 o'clock. So that's why you don't see them all the time. Now I'm going to start on his face, which is probably the most interesting part. So I'd say about two thirds of the way down, I'm going to make a little V. That's gonna be his nose. And then a tiny little line, and then almost like an upside down M, which will indicate his mouth. And then up here, on either side will be his eyes. And I, they almost look like little flags, but it's important to put this part like that goes down, like the what the what is holding up the flag because that's part of his eye that makes it really look like a tiger. And then this part is almost like an upside down triangle. That's his nose coming down. And then if you around each one of those eyes make like a little parentheses and then extend down just past his mouth and that will show the bone structure of his, of his face. And then under this bow shape, which was the, was the upside down M, or it could be a very wide W, then that, I'm making a square because that's almost a square shape, his chin, and that part's white and it's kind of fluffy and shaggy. And then so he has ears. So here's the middle of his head. I'm gonna flatten it out kind of a tiny touch. And here's a little round here, ear here and a little round ear here. And usually they have a little black right on the edge there. I might as well put that in right now. And I'm just gonna make a very light line down the center because when I put the pattern in, it's exactly the same on the left and the right side of the face. And then this part is left for the kind of this fluffy ruff that they have that is also light colored. So I'm just indicating the longer fur and I'm cutting off part of the circle there as it goes under his chin and then maybe a little bit more of that f thick fur coming down his neck. Now the, I would say the biggest surprise when we went to India and went to the parks, I'm just gonna make his tummy come down a little bit. Um, the biggest surprise was I always think India, jungle, tigers. Well, it's more like New England where I live. There are like these big, huge deciduous trees, which means the leaves drop off, but they like maples, oaks, um, um, beech, but they're all Indian trees. So they're different, the leaves are different, but they look somewhat the same. And then there are all these rocky outcroppings and then a lot of like tall grass. And the tiger is perfectly, um, colored to fit into the situation. You really don't see them until you see the movement because those stripes just blend in with the tall grass and the you know, dead foliage and everything. And they're kind of a beautiful yellowy orange color. So I'll put his eyes and I, I wish I could really capture the tiger's stare because when it looks at you, you almost get a chill because they are so intense and, and they're imperious, like they don't, as, as if, well, I don't care that you're a human being. I'm a tiger, <laughs> they, and they're huge. Did I say how big they are? They are bigger than a man lying down, like six feet is what they're, uh, that would be a small one. The males are bigger than the females, but other than that, they look fairly similar. So I think I'm going to color him in and see if I can remember more things about our, uh, our trip there in India to tell you about that would make it interesting about knowing about these, these animals. I'm gonna do the coloring in three different parts. First, I'm gonna put shading in with my gray. It has a little bit of a bluish cast. Then I will put in the golden yellow of his coat and then leave white, the parts that are white. And then I'll put the stripes in, which are black, and they'll go right over that golden color, which is, we're lucky, because if they're white stripes, then I would have to take steps in a different way. So I'm just going around the whole animal and just putting a little bit of shading in. Just around his edges. And you'll see that he'll look a slightly more rounded when I'm finished. All, the, all through the park, you'll see these um, men that are hired by the park on elephants and they'll be Indian elephants and they sit right behind the head and they go all over looking at for the tigers and making sure there's no poaching. And they, they are matched with the elephant when they were young boys, probably about 14 years old. They're called mahouts and they will stay with that elephant, usually work with that, working with them, different jobs, but these 
people were all in the park looking for poachers and protecting. And they um, are very close with their elephant. And they're much tamer than African elephants. More tractable, that's the word they use, which just means they'll, they'll be more eager to work. So sometimes we'd come across a mahout with his elephant in the park, and they'll say, well, we've see, we saw you know, a mother and cub, or we saw, they're always very friendly. And sometimes you could even, as a tourist, go for a ride on those elephants and look for tigers that way. I think they use, a lot of times they do see them. So now I'm doing a little shading. I'm taking a special time right around the uh, tiger's eyes because I try to capture that intense look that they give you. So when we saw our tiger, what you do first, well, mostly the, during the daytime, I should explain, they, um, they are just down in the grass eating their kill or sleeping off the nights um, hunting. So there's these dirt roads that the jeeps can go on, but the jeeps can't go off the road. And I start putting the yellow on to explain when we first saw the tiger, the yellowy gold color. So I'm using a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of red to make the color of the tiger. We're going down one of these roads that cut through the park, and they're soft, sandy roads. And Tigers are like many other cats in that they, like, they don't like getting their feet. Um, they love the soft, the soft ground. And so we saw the prints of the tiger, which is really fun to see. They're huge. And then um, all of a sudden we heard the monkeys and the uh, deer. They're called spotted deer. They're like a regular deer, but they're co covered with white spots like our fawns are here in North America. But this is adults have the spots, spotted deer. And they both go, woof, woof, when they sense danger. So when they see a tiger coming, because that's one of their predators, they will start up this uproar of, of yelping, both the monkeys and the, and the um, spotted deer. So when we heard that, we thought we might be close. I mean, they could be uh, uh, upset about something else, too, so you just didn't know. And sometimes the guides can help us with that, is tell um, what they think the particular call might mean. And so we stopped the um, vehicle, and we're just kind of listening. And then all of a sudden, we heard this roar. And it like made us, uh, the, the hair stand up on our arms, because it was so primal <laughs> to hear this loud and really loud because they can be heard like a mile away the tigers and we heard this roar and so then we just stayed there totally silent silent listening to the barking of the deer and then we I was the first one to see it I saw this like a little rustling in the grass and then you saw movement but you didn't see the tiger I thought, I wonder if that could be it. So I just kept my eyes on that movement. And then pretty soon it came out of the grass. And then you saw the outline of the tiger. It was a big male. And then it roared again. And then it walked down the road for a while. So we just followed it. And it just could care less about the, the vehicle. It doesn't really stress them at all. They do give them lots of time to be without people looking at them. But he could go into the woods at any time if he wanted to. So jungle is like woods, and I think some parts of India are much more tropical than where we were. It was actually very cold. We were getting sweat buying sweatshirts and mittens and hats and everything because we were getting um, really cold <laughs> on, on the jeep. And everywhere you could see peacocks, which was really amazing. I mean, not just one, but like whole flocks of them walking along and sometimes you could see the males displaying which means spreading their tail out and like vibrating it back and forth. Okay, so here's this, the top of his forehead which is this beautiful color. And then right above his eyes leave that white because that's the way they look. And then his nose is gonna be kind of a pinkish color. And then leave his little muzzle, that would be the area right on either side of his, the part between, underneath his nose and right where there's his mouth just like this little part right here, white. 
and then the ruff is white, and the inside of the ears are white. And actually, the back of the ears are white, too. I just do a little bit on his leg. They're mostly white on the inside, the legs. So time for the stripes. He's, he's looking okay. Usually it takes me an hour to do an inch. I know I always say that, but I always feel like when I'm doing a rough sketch like this, it's not quite as up to where I'd want it to be. And the little villages around the park were amazing. Lots of little farms with chickens and lots of loose cattle because they are not allowed to be killed. Yeah, so I'm just going to make some markings on his head. This one this almost looks like a little seagull. And each, of course, each of these will um, be a little different, so you don't have to worry about making a mistake. <laughs> you can just make up your own. I'm just going to accentuate his eyes right now because they're kind of rimmed with black. And this little part that comes down, and maybe another one right there. And then you can, some of the stripes start at the back, and then some of them start a little bit further down. So I might, I'm using my brush to make it go thinner and thicker and then thinner and thicker. And then getting towards down towards its legs, the stripes will change directions a little bit. So I'm mixing blue and brown, which is how I, how I make black. So in the little villages, you could see the families would have their cow that they might milk and they would have chickens and lots of dogs and lots of cats. And then each farm would have a little plot of land that they would farm. And the people look very happy and very had beautiful colored, colorful saris on, which is the, what the ladies wear. They're beautiful dresses in every color you could imagine. And so the, sometimes the tigers will escape the park and go out into the villages, which is, no one wants that. Because they are, they, sometimes you'll get one that will hurt a person, kill a person, actually is what they do. <laughs> but not often. And nobody wants that because then the, the, probably the tiger's gonna have to be killed if that happens. And usually it happens when um, it's an older one and they can't eat and they're starving. But I don't think you would want to be walking around that park around, <laughs> you know, late at, in, in the afternoon, getting towards night. You would not want to be walking around. And a lot of people go out and gather wood. And so I, I think that they're doing a job that's not very safe <laughs> when they're gathering wood. So the last thing I'm going to do is just put in a little bit of gold on his eyes and leaving a little white sparkle. Oh, and his nose. And then I'll make the ground, which is gonna be kind of that brownish color because I wanna show how he, he blends in. And then I'll put a little shadow there too in a minute. After I do his pink nose, don't wanna forget that, and his whiskers. Oh, there's another kind of cat that lives there. It looks just like a Maine Coon cat. It's like so fluffy and kind of a tabby color. And it's a little bit bigger than a re regular domestic cat, but we saw one, and it was adorable. It was so cute. But of course, I don't think it has the nature of a, of a house cat. I think it's probably <laughs> pretty wild. So there's a sloth bear that lives in the park that we did not see, and different kinds of, it's like a water buffalo type creature, two kinds of monkeys, several kinds of deer, and then really magnificent birds including the peacock and the, and the um, red jungle fowl, which is the ancestor of the chicken, which I was very excited to see. Putting some whiskers on us. I'm making them gray so they'll stand out a little bit. And the last thing will be his nose and he'll be all done. <laughs> kind of a pink, brownie pink. There you go. Maybe it's a little... So an artist should always sign their work. So I'll sign my picture and I hope you sign your picture and I hope you're as pleased 
as can be with your tiger.